So I'm at my local market, right? And I walk into the main hall. And there's a guy there. He's just got... It's not a joke, by the way. It's not a crap joke. It's the truth. There's a guy there. He's got two small boxes of records. All right, mate. Hiya. He's very quirky, but very lovely. Flicking through. Of course he starts asking me questions. He's like, what do you like? What are you after? What do you seek? I'm like, I don't know, mate. I'm just flicking through. Ah, I see your David Bowie tattoo. I was like, I'm all right for Bowie records, believe me. I've got over 40, but flicking through. Peter Gabriel. So, we all like a bit of sledgehammer in this house. Yoink. Put that to the side. I'll be taking that, mate. Flicking through, flicking through. Next box. Flicking through, he's like, are you familiar with the Alan Parsons project? I was like, why do I know them? And then it dawned on me. He never answers, he's always bloody working. Hello? Hiya, hi. Where are you? In the van, I'm uh, driving back from Liverpool, where are you? Oh, I'm just at home in my uh, studio. Do you remember when uh, you were younger you used to have a song that you would have set as your alarm, but you were so shit at getting up in the morning that you had to plug it into the stereo before you went to bed through the auxiliary cables and turn it on full volume so that you would wake up. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I thought so. What was it? Our passes project. <laughs> <laughs> what was the song? Right. Well, to be honest, in that in that situation, I can imagine a lot of people were resonating with that song when you were yeah. face down in in your pit at what seven a.m. eight a.m. Probably about eight a.m. Eight a.m. Didn't Ronnie used to like leather the uh, plasterboard stud wall? Be like, Luke, will you shut up? Yeah, he, did. he, he wasn't too impressed, mate. <laughs> I think you'd uh, have PTSD. From He's got PTSD from the Alan Parsons project. Exactly. Yeah. Should have come with a warning on the uh, on the vinyl. So here's the vinyl. Apparently, it's quite rare to find this out and about. Get out of bed, Luke. It's 8 a.m. Wouldn't want to be like you. Oh. Grow up, will you? And if it wasn't pre-owned, then I wouldn't have written. Helen Powell with a blue bookies pen on the inside of it, would I know? Cheers, Helen. Yeah, the album is called I Robot. It's a really cool front cover, to be honest. It does remind me of the building from the film I Robot, where Sonny comes from, and that scientist who keeps going, that detective is the right question, or the wrong question. All tracks written by Eric Wolfson and Alan Parsons, except Total Eclipse, which was written by Andrew Powell. Now that's interesting, isn't it? Because the name that's penned at the top is Helen Powell. Ooh, what's happened here? We might have to do some investigating. What if it's his sister? Who's her copy? There you go, Helen. Oh, thanks, Andrew. Then they have a big fallout, something to do with the Christmas dinner. That's going to charity shop, never liked it anyway. Or maybe they were married, Andrew and Helen Powell, and this song was about her. She was dead proud of it. Helen Powell, write my name on top. Now, divorce, could be less proud. It's a shit song, it's going to charity shop. Or what if the guy from the market is Andrew Powell and he's flogging his, uh, his ex-girlfriend's copies? I certainly hope that's not the case, because it's a great album. Anyway, so this guy pulled the right little fast one on me, he did. I was in there with Gab, I picked out two records, this one, and so, Peter Gabriel. And I said to him, how much for these? And he said, oh, I'll do the two of them for 12 quid. I was like, all right, cool. Flicking through my wallet. I was like, I've not got much cash on me. I don't carry much cash anymore. He was like, oh, I can do them both for a tenner. I was like, okay, cool, let me have a look. I had a fiver, four pound coins and about 50p. I said, I've got 9.50 on me, or I can go to the cash machine. And he was like, I can only do them for 10. Very assertive. I was like, no problem. I said, just put them aside. I'll go to the cash machine. 
went to the cash machine, came back with a crisp tenner. I was like, hey mate, I'm coming back to get this record. He was like, 12 quid. He knew. He knew I now had 10 quid, a fiver, and the four one pound coins. And I just thought, you know what? Because of the confidence in acting like you've lost your memory, I'm gonna give you 12 quid. But I think 12 quid for iRobot by the Alan Parsons Project and so by Peter Gabriel is a very good deal. No jumps, they play beautifully. And uh, yeah, he made me laugh. Thanks mate, it's not really a fast one, but it was just funny. good. You remember that. You can trust me. Now, first things first, key and scale positions. We're in the key of C minor. And if you learn C Aeolian scale or C natural minor scale, two different fingerboard positions, as well as the C blues scale, because there is a little flat five later on in the song, that'll see you through the whole solo. So here are two positions of C Aeolian. <laughs> Now our second position is just gonna be the E flat major scale because it's the relative major of C minor. It's got all the same notes. And also I mentioned the C blues scale, so it's worth going through that as well. Here is the first little section. So we're going to start with these repetitive funky slides from the 8th fret of the G up to the 10th fret. Once you get to that 10th fret, you're going to hit it again and come back to the 8 with the index. That last time, Hit the 8 on the G and then come down to the root note of the C, which is the 10th fret of the D string. And then we've got this. So that's a very choppy staccato bend. You're going to take the 10th fret of the G, bend it up, bring your pick back in, touch the string just before you're about to pick it and release it, and that way you'll kill the note and pick a new one. And then back and forth between the 8, 10, on the G and the D. You can sneak in a little pinched harmonic if you want, but shh, don't tell anyone. Now we're gonna do this. This is where we move into a different scale position. Slide from the 10th fret of the G with your second finger into the 12. And pick 11, 13 on the B. And then keep your second finger free for the 12th fret of the G. It's like a little triangle. Super common, especially when you're playing like blues, pentatonic, to kind of slide up to like a little extension of your first position. Then you're going to push the 11th fret of the high E up just a little bit twice in a row. It's very cheeky. And then finish on that 13th fret of the B, it's the root note. Now we have this outrageously cool lick, and also the thing that cost me the most amount of time in my life when I was trying to figure it out. You 
going to start this exceptionally cool run with a semitone pre bend release on the high E, 10th fret, and then pull off to the A. Then move to the B string, pull off 11 to 8, and then take that 11th fret and bend it up straight away a whole step. I was always tempted to kind of delay this, but you've just got to bend it up to the note, be confident, and then bring your vibrato in. Then we've got this. So we're basically running down the blues scale, high E, eighth fret, and then pull off 11 to eight on the B. And then you're gonna pull off 11, 10, eight on the G. And then we've got this little triangle, as I like to call it again, where you're gonna go 10 on the G, 10 on the D, and then eight on the G. If you can at that moment, just give the eighth fret of the G a little micro pull. And then you're gonna hit the 10th fret of the G and pull off back to the eight. It's a very cool lick. Once you get it down, it's incredibly addictive. Now, the tricky thing is exiting this into a direct repeat. You might think, well, that's easy. It's just the change in rhythm and pacing that kind of makes it bizarre, because we've got to go. And obviously, it's a lot quicker. So at first, that was giving me a lot of hiccups, musical hiccups, not actual hiccups. That would be concerning. But a lot of um, kind of fumbling when I was trying to play it, kept messing it up specifically that part, but hey, we practice, we get there. So here's the second repeat. There is a little bit more to it, but let me walk you through the changes there and how it exits differently. So it's exactly the same all the way through until we come to that pre-bend release on the 10th fret of the high E. So after that pull off on the B string from the 11 back to the eight, we don't actually bend the 11 back up to the root note. Instead, we're just gonna fret the 11 and give it some vibrato. Then we've got this. I feel like the little pre-bend release thing has been made into a thing here, which is cool. So I started by pre-bending the 11th fret of the B, a whole step with a second finger, kind of tricky. Let that down and then grab the 12 on the G and then we're gonna go eight on the G, 10 on the D and then a very quick hammer on eight to 10 on the G. I prefer that than doing it here. I never bend with my pinky and I feel like when I bend with my third finger there, I don't like the flat index roll. I prefer doing it the first way, but you can choose, okay? It's gonna make the same sound. Then we have this. So I'm sliding from the eighth fret of the G back to the seven, semitone. And then I'm pulling off 10 to eight on the D, down to 10 on the A, and then back to eight on the D. Now you could pre-bend release that with the index finger, seven. I just feel like on the track, it's a little bit more definitive than a pre-bend release that time. So if you listen to the track, 
that eighth fret of the D is held with some vibrato and then it slides up the fretboard and down and out. So right at the end, that will enter you into this last phrase. So because we finished the last part with a down and out slide, you're probably going to end up zipping back into that eighth fret with the index finger before hitting the 10 with the third finger. Try and keep it choppy as you rock back and forth. And at the end, there's kind of like this little ghost note. I'm pulling off from the 10 back to the eight, but I also do it with a little bit of palm muting. So it's, it's, it's more percussive than anything else. But you can hear it. Then we've got this. So the eighth fret of the G, and then 10th fret of the G, you're gonna bend that up a whole step, come back in with the pick to deaden the string, and then pre-bend release. And you're gonna walk backwards, down the C blue scale. So that's gonna be eight, 10, eight on the D, and then 10 on the A. And to finish, you've got this little run. So that's 10th fret of the D, then 8th fret, and then chromatically descending, 10, 9, 8 on the A. Pick everything, but then slide back to the 6. And then you're going to hit your root note, 8th fret of the low E, the 6, and then the 8th fret again. Well, that was a good bit of fun, wasn't it? I hope you enjoyed yourself, I did. And I'm really glad I learned that solo. I think it's really interesting how we can be inspired to learn things for the silliest of reasons. This one happened to be because my brother was so shit at getting up in the morning, as I used to be, we all were, that he used to plug his mobile phone into my old stereo, crank it, with that song as his alarm to go off at about half seven, eight. And he still didn't get up, which meant my brother would be leathering on the, on the wall. Get up, turn this bloody song off, it's every day. I can just imagine it in the old house. Uh, kind of wish I was there, to be honest. But I wasn't. Don't know what I was doing. But I know what you could be doing. You could be hitting like, subscribe, and the bell next to it. Here I am with me mantra. And uh, if that wasn't enough for you, well then you could also join me over on Patreon where you can support this channel. And in return, you get things like PDF tabs, song forms, some behind the scenes of me in this pink shirt, amongst many other wonderful things. So if that floats your boat, click the link up there or in the description, come and have a chat. It's lovely believe me. Right, me and my slippers are going downstairs to top up my brew because I've got some private lessons very soon. I'll see you later.